Harry by Rosemary Temperley. This is a ghost story about a boy named Harry and a girl named Christine. It starts and ends with these words. Such ordinary things make me afraid. Sunshine, sharp shadows on grass, white roses, children with red hair, and the name Harry. Such an ordinary name. One day, Christine was playing in the yard when she rose up and walked towards a white bush. Then, Christine started talking to an invisible person. There was a shadow in the bush. Shadows always appear when Christine is talking to this person. When Miss James, her adopted mother, asked Christine who she was talking to, Christine said, Harry, as if he were real and standing in front of her. When Miss James spoke to her husband Jim about this, he said, Christine has an imaginary friend. She asked, but why has she picked that particular name? The next morning, Christine sat on the grass staring towards the rose bush and started talking to Harry again. Miss James said she felt cold while she watched Christine through the window. Every time Harry was near, the temperature fell. There was a chill or a shadow. When she asked Christine to come in for her mid-morning milk, Christine asked if Harry could come in too. Miss James said, No! This automatically puts Miss James and Harry at odds with each other. Eventually, Harry will get his revenge. When asked about Harry, Christine said he was her brother. Miss James said, But Chris, you haven't got a brother. Christine said, Harry's my brother. He says so. Later, Miss James asked Christine to come shopping with her. Christine asked if Harry could come along, but Miss James refused to allow this. She said, My hands were trembling. It was chilly in the house nowadays, as if there were a cold shadow over it, in spite of the sun outside. When a ghost is present, the temperature in the room drops, and it feels cold. This time, Jim heard Christine talk to Harry. He said that Christine talked more freely now that she met her imaginary friend. Miss James said Christine had a cockney accent only when she talked to Harry. When she asked Jim where Christine got her cockney accent from, he said she got it from the baker, the milkman, the dustman, the coal man, the window cleaner. Jim sees Christine's fascination with Harry as harmless. He doesn't realize that the ghost is real, and he wants Christine for himself. To ease her mind, Jim suggested his wife take Christine to see a child psychiatrist, Dr. Webster. While in the waiting room at Dr. Webster's office, Christine looked out the window and said Harry was waiting for her outside near the white rose bushes in the doctor's yard. Wherever there's white rose bushes, that's where Harry will be. After Christine and Dr. Webster's talk, he said Christine had nothing wrong with her whatsoever. He said she's just an imaginative little monkey. Let her talk about Harry. Let her become accustomed to confiding in you. We learn through Dr. Webster in Christine's brief exchange that Harry makes wooden toys. He can read and write. He can swim, climb trees, and paint pictures. He's also got red hair like Christine. He's 14 years old, tall and thin. After the visit with Dr. Webster, Miss James said, Chris ran ahead of me. She looked up as if at someone beside her. For a brief, dreadful second, I saw a shadow on the pavement alongside her own, a long, thin shadow, like a boy's shadow. Then it was gone. At home, 
Miss James said her own child was becoming a stranger. She started to ask, Who is she? Where does she come from? Who were her real parents? Who is this little loved stranger I've taken as a daughter? Who is Christine? When Miss James told Christine she'd be going to school the next day, she didn't want to go because Harry couldn't go. When she told Christine to stop the nonsense and then struck her on the arm, Christine said, You don't love me. Harry loves me. Harry wants me. He says I can go with him. Harry wants to take her away? After putting Christine to bed for a nap, Miss James said, it was still daylight. I went to the window to draw the curtains, golden shadows and long strips of sunshine in the garden. Then again, like a dream, the long, thin, clear-cut shadow of a boy near the white roses. Like a mad woman, I opened the window and shouted, Harry! Harry! I thought I saw a glimpse of red among the roses like close red curls on a boy's head. Then there was nothing. Once Christine was at school, Miss James went on her secret mission to probe into Christine's past. Though her husband was against this, she had to do it anyway. She went to the Greythorn Adoption Society and spoke to Miss Cleaver. After telling Miss Cleaver about Christine's obsession with Harry, Miss Cleaver said, Christine's parents didn't really want her. Her brother loved her, though. He took care of her. One day, Christine's father sealed off the doors and windows of their house, turned on the gas, and tried to kill himself and his family. The son, Christine's brother, plucked away the seals from the window, opened it, and flung himself out Holding his adored little sister in his arms, the boy died from the fall. Christine survived. Miss James asked what the boy's name was. Miss Cleaver said, Harold. He was 14 years old. Miss James then asked for the family's old address, and when she got to the old house, she saw a bush of white roses outside. The house was deserted. A woman from the top window said the place should be condemned and that the house is haunted. She said she saw Harry fall past her window. The woman said, that's where he fell, among the roses. He still comes back. I see him. He won't go away until he gets her. Then the lady told her to go away because the place was for the dead who weren't dead and the living who weren't alive. She said, am I alive or dead? You tell me, I don't know. Miss James said she lost all sense of time or place. Then she remembered that it was time to get Christine from school. She rushed to the school. She said, I caught the right bus, sick with dust, petrol fumes, and fear. And when she got there, she was told that Christine left with her brother, a redhead boy. This was Harry's goal all along, to get Christine, to be with him forever. In the process of doing so, he got his revenge on Miss James for rejecting him and trying to make Christine believe he didn't exist. Miss James ran all the way home and yelled for Harry, Don't take her away. Come back. Then she rushed to the garden where the air was so still that it seemed to stand in timelessness and placelessness. She seemed very near to Christine, even though she couldn't see her. Then the roses danced before her eyes turning red. The world turned red, blood red. For weeks, Miss James remained in bed with sunstroke while Jim and the police searched for Christine, but she was never found. The story ends with Miss James saying, Years have passed, but I walk in fear. Such ordinary things make me afraid. Sunshine, sharp shadows on grass, white roses, 
children with red hair, and the name Harry. Such an ordinary name. 